So I would like to offer a proposal or a challenge to exotic high-end cable companies. Let's call it the end the snake oil challenge. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics. I hope everybody's doing well and being safe. So I was thinking a lot about topics to cover on YouTube. And the one underlying theme about Audioholics for the last 20 plus years is debunking snake oil or uncovering the falsehoods in audio and, and basically explaining the reality or the truth based on sound engineering principles. There, most of the snake oil that I've dealt with that's in audio is around cables. So I was thinking to myself, I could continue to debunk the nonsense I see on many of these web page for these exotic cable companies. I could look at the principles that they're violating, write about it, talk about it here with you guys, and just keep going and the, vi and the cycle never ends. And we get a lot of views on this, of course, because people are really interested in this. But I was, trying to apply Occam's razor, where it states the simplest explanation is usually the right one. So I'd like to say the simplest path ahead is probably the right one. So in this case, I would like to propose to the exotic cable companies, if you guys stop using engineering terms and violating them to justify your products, then I'll stop writing and, and YouTubing about said products. So in other words, I don't care what you charge for your cables. I don't care what they look like. I don't even care if they measure poorly, which most of these cable companies don't even measure their cables. They don't measure them either because they lack the technical capability to do so, or they lack the instrumentation to do so. As I've showed you guys in prior videos, I have an $11,000 Wayne Kerr magnetic analyzer where I measure these cables. Many of these cable companies don't have that luxury. Many of these guys are basically taking uh, cables, twirling them up, putting a fancy jacket on it and selling them. And that's fine. You know, people, I hear people saying all the time, oh, Gene or Audio Hulk is anti-cable. They don't believe in cables. Of course I believe in cables. I believe cables work. And then people say, well, you don't believe cables sound different. Of course I believe cables can sound different but only poorly designed cables can be sonic sonically distinguishable in a controlled listening test. So that's always been my mantra. That's always what I've said for 20 plus years. So what I'd like to ask these cable companies, stop throwing around ridiculous engineering principles that you don't have a concept of grasping. You're just violating these terms, terms like skin effect or made up stuff like strand jumping causing diode rectification or um, you're reducing distortion in a cable when a piece of wire literally cannot produce a linear distortion. So these are just several examples of what I'm talking about. If you guys stop claiming you're solving an engineering problem that only exists in the audio world, it doesn't exist at RF frequencies, it doesn't exist with space technology, with NASA going you know, out in space and doing exploring. You never hear about these kind of problems with cables that these audio companies claim that they've solved. They claim the engineering textbooks aren't complete. They claim the understanding of EM theory that's been well established for almost a hundred years is completely oblivious about below 20 kilohertz. Somehow these audio companies who most of them don't have degreed engineers, most of them don't even have any technical capability to measure, somehow they're solving a problem that they're making up using engineering terms to violate. So all I'm asking you guys is to stop abusing engineering principles. That's all I'm asking. I just think we're living in an era of fake news and people distorting truth and reality why don't we have a little bit reality? It would be so refreshing to me if these exotic cable companies would basically just put their products on their websites and say, hey, we have this cable. It measures better than normal zip cord. It looks beautiful and it may or may not make a sonic difference in your system, but we've got these great connectors and they terminate well, and it's just gonna dress up your system. Let's face it, I use exotic cables. I've got Kimber cables on my reference system, Kimber ATCs. 
I know that it's audio jewelry. I say that it's audio jewelry. It is audio jewelry. But with Kimber, what I like about the brand is their stuff measures well. They actually publish their measurements. I verify their measurements with my Wayne Kerr analyzer and their product looks good. And they don't put a lot, as much fluff on their website as you see with other brands like AudioQuest, Nordost, and just, there's many brands out there. I don't wanna just single out one particular company. So my challenge again, stop violating engineering principles. Stop pretending you're solving these problems that don't exist in real engineering. I've written tons of articles debunking the strand jumping crap, the dielectric absorption stuff, which is something that happens with capacitors, but it's not a problem with wire in free space. So we could go on and on about all these theories. And in fact, if you're a cable vendor and you would like to discuss this more, comment down below. If you're a audiophile that loves your cables, comment down below. I have no problems with cables being expensive. I have no problems with cables being jewelry. I just want the engineering violations to stop. You know, uh, my good friend Joe Intel, he told me, I forgot who, who made this quote. Um, basically, if you can't prove, if you can't prove something is true, then there's no need for me to disprove your falsehood. I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember the exact quote here, but that just sticks to me. I, I'm done debunking nonsense when you can't even prove your own nonsense. So again, I challenge the cable companies to do this. Stop with the engineering violations. Market your products based on their looks, their build quality. I love braided cables. They can measure really well. Get some measurements done. In fact, if you want to submit your products to Audioholics to measure, I do consulting. I'll charge you a very fair fee. I'll measure all your products on my Winker Analyzer. I will allow you to publish my measurements on your website. So now you have a baseline. Now you have something to, to do empirically to show people with science, this is how my product performs. This is what you could expect when you buy my product. Because I'm gonna tell you guys, if you're gonna go and spend thousands of dollars on cables and there's no measurements on their website, why would you do that? You don't buy an amplifier without looking at specs. You don't buy a loudspeaker without knowing the specs. Why would you buy a piece of wire without knowing how it measures? So again, my friends, please comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this challenge, the end the snake oil challenge for cables. Don't forget about our Patreon at patreon.com slash audioholics. Join our Patreon, there's lots of benefits there. You can get direct access to me to ask questions or suggest video topics, even to uh, get your systems featured in future videos. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, my friends, keep listening. So I'd all, I'd, blah, so I'd like to make a proposal or a compromise with exotic